How white women have benefited the most from affirmative action is pretty easy to look up. And since this question is coming from a nameless, faceless profile, I'm not sure that it's being asked in good faith. If it's being asked in good faith, I'm about to give the answer. If it's being asked in bad faith, maybe in the future, ask yourself whether I'm really the person that you want answering this kind of question. How are you guys doing today? I hope that you guys are doing all right. Welcome back to this channel. So this man, Charlie Kirk here, many people have said that this man is not already to desist. But time and time again, he's come up with some things that he directly and boldly said. You can't even go around about it that he that he's not being hired to the cyst. Like what you're going to hear him say here about how black women, he's making a reference about somebody in customer service and says that black women are moronic or are they in that customer service because they have a degree like out of intelligence or it's because of affirmative action. Now, some people have responded to these Asians and different people to say that affirmative action actually benefited white women as opposed to black women. And also the fact that these black women, most of them, for them to get even these jobs, they're the intelligent ones. Because of the white supremacy system, whites usually are mediocre, even with schools, right? So how are you going to sit down and talk about a black woman being a moron or yet alone benefit from affirmative action and that's why they have that job that they have so anyway affirmative action are like procedures and um, policies that in for example the allocation of resources or, or jobs or employment they favor the the disadvantaged groups the minorities and the criteria is race disability gender and age but you're going to understand really how it favors white women because at the beginning it was not really um gender based it was only about race so let me roll the clips and then i'm going to be back to share my two cents just customer service at times you can't here's what's here's what's upsetting to me heather is if i'm dealing with somebody in customer service who's a moronic black woman. I don't, I, I wonder, is she there because of her, her excellence or is she there because affirmative action almost creates thought patterns that are not necessarily wholesome. It creates resentment, doesn't it, Heather? This is not a way to design society. Huh. Does anybody else find it so rich with Charlie Kirk here sitting here talking about a black woman benefiting from affirmative action is a thought running through his mind when he's on customer service uh, sitting next to a white woman. Does anybody find that rich except me? Why can't these bigots just come out and say they're racist? Because obviously intelligence is not their strong suit. You're literally sitting there talking to a white woman about black women benefiting most from affirmative action when it is white women literally who benefit the most from affirmative action. This is not even an extensive Google search to find out that although people associate affirmative action with the efforts to end discrimination for people of color, scholars say the greatest beneficiaries of affirmative action policies are white women, from college campuses to the American workplace. White women today are more educated and make up a larger slice of the workforce as a result of decades of affirmative action policies, scholars say. White women have also made inroads into corporate leadership that people of color and women of color have not. And allow me to say this going forward, because I'm always asking you all to pick a struggle. The issue is you all cannot pick a struggle. From now on, when you introduce yourselves, I want you to say, I'm a racist, and because of my inbred genetic makeup, I am also incapable of research. Therefore, I am intentionally stupid. So affirmative action was originally meant to address racial disparities only. It did not include gender. But in the late 1960s, the government correctly recognized that women had faced a great deal of disparity and obstacles and should be included in affirmative action. So keeping in mind that the only demographic that was not previously included in affirmative action that became included with that change is white women. And affirmative action was so effective for white women that by 1980, white women were no longer underrepresented in higher education. And by 1995, there were 6 million women, the vast majority of whom were white, who held jobs that they would not have held were it not for affirmative action. And this is all great. These are wonderful outcomes, and it shows how affirmative action should work 
for its intended beneficiaries. However, black students are still underrepresented in higher education and black men and women are still underrepresented in the workforce. And although there is still a gender pay gap, white women's average weekly earnings is more than that of black men or black women. And white men continue to benefit from affirmative action, particularly in the federal job sector. However, despite the fact that white women have been the greatest beneficiaries of affirmative action, 70% of them oppose affirmative action. So there also goes the idea that white women do not vote against their interests. Yes, this is true. The biggest group who's benefited from affirmative action is white women. Given the choice between hiring people of color of any gender versus still hiring someone who's white, but a woman, they went with white women. That being said, the problem of racism has been built over centuries and centuries and centuries. And so we cannot expect that our solutions will be silver bullets that just are perfect right out the gate. So yes, affirmative action does have its flaws and we need to come up with better ways to be more inclusive and you know equitable. However, what racists are trying to do is say any effort to get racial equity is racist. And that's what I'm pointing to. Service, who's a moronic black woman. I don't, I wonder, is she there because of her, her excellence or is she there because of affirmative action? Almost cr okay, so to the black conservatives who've been in my DMs and making videos about me because you feel the need to convince me that Charlie Kirk isn't a racist, you're defending this, right? This is what you're defending. The guy isn't even trying to hide his racism. Every time he uses someone as an example to prove his disdain for DEI or affirmative action, he always uses a black person. This time it's a black pilot or a moronic black woman. Soon it'll be his idiotic, moronic, dumbass black conservative friend. Yeah, you. And again, DEI does not mean less qualified. You could damn sure believe that if a black person is holding down one of these jobs you guys love to bring up, they're probably more qualified and working harder than anyone there because they always have to prove that they're worthy of that job. You guys will sell out for a freaking penny, but the rest of us, we're not falling for this bullshit. Period. Is affirmative action really racist AF? Well, it puts certain people at advantages or disadvantages based solely on their race. And it also says that African-Americans cannot succeed in a merit-based system. So yeah, it is racist. What if I told you it benefited white women more than anyone else? Would it still be racist AF? Yeah, it actually would be, but it's not true. So it doesn't really matter. And if you genuinely believed it was true, then you would be opposing affirmative action, not defending it. The Times article she cites here says, according to one study in 1995, six million women, the majority of whom were white, had jobs that they otherwise would not have had but for affirmative action. So let's go here. One study to a blog by Tim Wise. Tim Wise is the author of Between Barack and a Hard Place. He says basically the same thing the Times article says, and then six million women wouldn't have the jobs they have today if it not were for the inroads made by affirmative action. The, the author then asserts that white women have been the primary beneficiaries of affirmative action. But if we look at the actual original source, it says six million women have moved into executive, managerial, professional, and sales jobs since 1972. But it does not mention the racial makeup of these six million women. But it also says that five and one half million of minority employees are in higher level jobs because of this as well. So nothing here indicates that white women disproportionately benefited. That information is just insufficient. So we have to look at other studies that actually look at this specific issue. So here we can see the breakdown of white male, black male, white female, black female. And of course we have the different years and the different jobs. The main jobs mentioned prior were managerial positions and sales, so let's look at those ones. You can see the share of black women doubled in managerial positions from 1966 to 1980. The share of white women increased, but it did not double. The share of black men more than doubled. The share of black women increased in sales. The share of white women decreased in sales. So it's not looking good for the claims made in that Times article. Here is another study. This is a more recent study. It looks at many of the same things, just over a longer period. I wanna focus on this quote right here. 
affirmative action increased the employment of black and Native American women and men at the expense of white women. So the data shows the exact opposite of the claim made in the Times article. But again, even if it was the case that white women were disproportionately benefiting from these policies, then why is the left so against getting rid of the policy? Like, come on guys, we can all tell you're bluffing. You don't actually believe this. Guys, I'm gonna say the numbers are not lying here. We can see from the six million, that's about, the six million are white women. And just like that Asian woman mentioned to say most of the times when women are two, there's a black woman and a white woman, Definitely the white woman stands a high chance of getting that job because of, you know, the white supremacy system. We've been talking about this, right? So there's no way that somebody is going to have to say it makes them mad because they find a black woman that is doing the job. Probably they expect that their own person, you know, their own type of a person should be doing that because somebody black would do less of a job because they are they don't they, are, they don't they lack intelligence and whatnot and it's just a favor that they need to do that job so that you know these procedures the same um affirmative action is being followed or somehow it's being pronounced but how much data do you need to understand that white women of all these this data that has been pre presented are the ones that um have been gaining the most out of it there's no running away from me to you guys so this is how affirmative action really favors white women than black women because initially it was just about um about race right but then even women got integrated to say okay let, let us go but then among the women are different races so those that are of color have gotten sidelined most of the time so you let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section please do subscribe to this channel because i do have more for you